Well, yesterday we managed to get the computer talking to the new 3D printer. So today it logically makes sense to print some parts. Let's do it. Welcome to 3D Accuracy, where I'll talk about 3D printing, 3D product design, and 3D injection and die cast mold design. Okay, I have the printer turned on. It's in idle mode. It's already gone through its little uh, initialization. You know, it, the print head moves around, checks its location in relation to the build chamber, that sort of thing. And I have grab CAD, and we have some parts I want to print. Now, these are just little sample parts. I know the machine works because I 3D printed this part with it when I bought the machine. I wanted to make sure that the printer ran properly, and it did. It printed a good part. But these will be the first parts that we've printed since I've gotten the machine over here into the shop. So, I'm going to make some more of those sample parts, these things here that I give away to people, that sort of thing, because I want to use up the last of that PLA material that's in the machine right now. And there's only enough to make 12 of these. I can actually fit 16, but there's not enough material to print 16 parts. So we'll empty out the material, then I'll get that spool out of there, and I have some TPU material that I want to experiment with in the next several days. I have to design a part, and then we'll be printing some other materials with that machine. Okay, so for now, everything is all set up. It's all tweaked in and ready to go. All I have to do is come over here, and where's my mouse? There it is. Okay, let's just hit print down here in the corner. And it's preparing to print. Okay, print job queued successfully. All right, now let's go see if I can see it over on the printer. <coughs> and where are you? It's ready to go. Okay, touch here. There you go. It even shows a picture of the layout of the parts that we're going to make. That's pretty cool. I like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit print, and we should be good to go. Okay, I guess it wants to double check, huh? Print again. Preparing. You can see there, three hours and four minutes. So right now it's uh, like a little after 9 o'clock, so somewhere around noontime, we should have some parts made. Okay, it's... Building 3130, chamber... Okay... This is a very quiet machine. I like that because when I'm out in the shop, you know, usually I'm working on stuff. I'm thinking, designing products and, or injection molds, that sort of thing. And so I like it that the machines are quiet. All right, so it's going to do its thing probably warm up the build chamber a little bit before it goes. And you see, I've got scrap in there in the bottom that's from previous people so once we finish emptying this spool I'll clean all this out there's just filament because what happens is when it purges material up here at the top there's a little chute in the back that little piece of that little flat piece of metal you see there, there's a gap behind there, and all of that stuff falls down behind the build platform and goes into the bottom of the machine. So every once in a while you need to clean all that junk out of there, get all that purged material out. Okay, she's moving. See the tip back there? I don't know if it's going to purge some material. We're just heating things up. Uh, 
Uh, where the heck? There it is. There's the tip. Not used to the sequencing of this machine yet. Outside of printing that small sample part, this is my first run of the machine. It's just calibrating in relation to the build platform, apparently. I believe that's what it's doing. Touching it in several places. Where'd it go? There it is. And my understanding is PLA does not need to be as warm as the thermoplastic materials. PLA, polylactic acid, I believe it's actually corn-based. It's not a petroleum-based filament material. It's just in filament form. Okay, we're starting to lay down some material there. You can see the green. Okay, so she's underway. It actually doesn't uh, need to be really warm in the build chamber like it does for ABS and nylon and polycarbonate and some of the other materials. It's a cooler printing material. And there is no support material that goes with it. <clears throat> when I first printed uh, this sample part, when I was checking out the machine, it actually uses the PLA as support material. Now, let me redo this here so we can see a little better. <clears throat> it actually uses the PLA as support material. So what happened was, I have the piece over here, let me grab it. It actually prints a little platform to start building the part on, and that's what the printer is doing now. It's, it's going to print all of these first before it prints the parts on top of it. You see, that's what it's, that's what it's doing in there. <clears throat> and so this was actually built like this in the machine, and then this was built on top of it. And so never having made parts where the support material was the same as the model material, I was like, okay, now how do we get that off of there without damaging the part? And I found what I did is I took a pliers along those pliers and I grabbed the edge of this little platform that it printed first because it sticks out around the edges like this. And I was able to bend that back, and then it cracked it loose from the part. And I was able to get a knife blade in there and, and carefully push across the edge and separate the part from this support material platform that's made out of the same material. I was able to separate that without damaging the part. So I thought, okay, that's simple enough. We can do that. So... <clears throat> But with the other materials, it'll have support material. And then sometimes you can crack it off. Sometimes you just put it in the wash tank and get that out. Dissolve all the support material and get rid of it. Okay, so we'll let this work for a while. And then we'll check back in a little bit and see what it looks like. I just wanted to check and see how the parts were coming along. They've been printing for... Oh, roughly two hours, and they're on the last two layers. Of course, that's where all the lettering is, so it takes a little while for it to print it. It's just finishing off the tenth layer, or starting the tenth layer. Yeah, it's starting the tenth layer, then it has to do 11 and 12. One hour remaining, it just said on the timer, on the LED readout. So they're getting there, looking pretty good. Another hour they'll be all done, all the lettering will be on them. That's pretty cool. 
Yeah, I like this machine. It's quiet. Quiet is a good thing. Okay, we'll check back in a little while. Okay, well it shows we have three minutes left to go in this print build. So let's take a look at it, see what's, what it looks like. Yeah, you can see there's lettering on the parts. And it looks like it's on its last two pieces. That's cool. I always like making parts. It's fun to do. It's hard to get a good angle at the part where you can see what's going on because of the way the uh, you can see there's the door coming into the view so I can't get up high enough to get a good view at the top of the parts you're kind of limited to the sides here so of course if it was a much taller part then as it built it would look better okay two minutes remaining Got that one part in front to do after it finishes the one it's on, and then it's all done. Three hours went by quickly. Hard to keep it focused and looking good because of the print tip moving around. There we are, now we're on the last part. One minute remaining. Putting the last little layer on all that lettering. Yeah, see as the print hit moves, it confuses the camera. It doesn't know where to focus. That's good. That's good. When this is done, then I'll just let the parts sit on the tray in the machine for a while since they're thin, flat parts. I don't want to be taking them off and having them curl. I'll let them cool down a little bit before I pull it out and uh, remove them from the build platform. No need. We're not in a, in a rush. It's not like we're trying to make a FedEx pickup for <laughs> sending parts in an emergency to somebody. There we go. Looks like 12 good parts. Done. <laughs> great, great. Okay, well when I go to pull these out of the machine, then I'll take a little video of that, show you what the parts look like up close. But I'll let them cool for a while first, and then we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, good progress. I like that. Done. Print successful. Of course, that's generally always the case with a Stratasys printer. <laughs> These I have, boy, they are such workhorses. I can set this guy up, let him print for a couple of days and don't have to look at it until the part is done. And the same with uh, my Fortis 400MC over there. That's a real good printer also 
I just print parts and walk away until they're done and it come back and they're all finished and they look great. So we'll consider that a successful build. First one in the 3D print shop. Of course I did 3D print the little part when I tested the machine to make sure it was working properly before I purchased it. But this is the first successful parts 3D printed in the shop here at 3D Accuracy. Okay, so we'll take it. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you're ever in need of 3D product design, 3D injection mold design, 3D die cast mold design, or 3D printed prototypes or production parts, please feel free to contact me. You can find contact information in the video description. I look forward to hearing from you and to being of service to you. Thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate it. See you on 3D Accuracy's next video.